Hello, fellow Rebel Capitals. Hope you're well. Wanted to go over some, what I think is breaking economic news. I've been watching the 10-year Treasury yield all morning, and it is absolutely collapsing. And uh, I, I don't, I'm not a historian on the bond market, but I would say this type of move is extremely rare, if not unprecedented where we've seen the 10 year, in fact, let me go to a chart right now. Uh, actually now it's, well, it, it's back up to 2.85%. Uh, it was down, it might've actually traded under 2.8%. I think it might've gotten down to 2.79, but it's just all over the place, incredibly volatile. And it started off the day, if uh, this chart is right here from CNBC, right around, let's call it, uh, you know, 3% or so, maybe uh, 2.98. And it was down just to 2.8% just before I started the stream. And like I said, I think it might have actually, actually, this should show us here. Yeah, it did. It got to uh, 2.79%. So the close was at 2.97, uh, got down to 2.79. Uh, and keep in mind, guys, this is the 10-year. This is not the two-year <laughs> I'm talking about. This is the 10-year. I mean, really shocking. Uh, just This is, like I said in the title, this is screaming recession. I mean, let's just think about this. The Fed just raised rates. 75 basis points from 75 to 150, 1.5%. And the 10 year, actually, let's just go to like a three month chart. So when the Fed did this, as you would expect, uh, the 10 year increased as well because it brings up pretty much the entire curve. Uh, now it might bring up uh, the front end to a greater degree as measured by basis points than the long end but it bring, usually brings up the whole curve. Uh, but look at what we've seen. Since the Fed increased interest rates, the 10-year treasury is now lower, lower than it was not just prior to them raising rates by 75 basis points, but even going back like almost, um, what here? This would be almost... Five, six, so almost uh, a month, month and a half here. And we could go back and keep in mind the Fed uh, increased rates about two weeks ago. So we go back even further, another two weeks, three weeks, and it's very close to where the 10 year trading, uh, the 10 year treasury is trading now in terms of yield. I mean, that that's just as if the Fed didn't even raise rates. Uh, but the short end is still at 150, or at least Fed funds. Let's check out the two-year. My guess is the two-year went down, but it's probably flattening out, which it is. You got it. So the two-year, that's a one-year. Let's go to a three-month here. So two-year has had the same trajectory. I don't know why this the number on the graph is always different. Or not, no, it's always kind of... Oh, no, no, it changed. I guess this is kind of a lag on the graph, but I think this is, is real-time data. So this is 2.78. So, wow. Okay, let's think about that, guys. So the low on the two-year, 2.72 today. But, um, I mean, it's only at, it's basically 2.79, and the 10-year got to 2.79. I don't know how long ago. That was sometime within today's trading. So we're getting super, super, super close to another yield curve inversion. And right off the top of my head, I can't recall a time, I don't have this chart right in front of me, but I, I know it well, where the twos and the tens invert, you can take that back to 1950, but I don't know if there has ever been a time when the yield curve is inverted three times, three times 
uh, within that span of the so the first inversion usually indicates the uh, a recession within 18 to 24 months but usually you don't get another inversion within that 20 uh, within that uh, 18 month window but now potentially and i i think we'll probably see it this week if i was betting i would bet money that we see another inversion of the curve again this week so that would make it three that would make it two since the initial inversion and uh but yet still within that 18 month window uh because you know you could say if it was longer than 18 months then you could potentially say oh well that first inversion didn't mean anything but i don't think you can say that if it's still within that first 18 month window and uh wow this is uh this is really incredible stuff. So I wanted to do a quick video. Josh is, uh, I think, running a marathon right now, believe it or not. And so as soon as I saw that and kind of processed it, I wanted to do a quick live stream to share the news with you guys. And I'll keep you posted throughout the rest of the morning and into the afternoon. So uh, guys, definitely, <clears throat> if you've got the CNBC app on your phone, or if you don't, it might be a good idea <laughs> to get it not that i'm a huge fan of cnbc but we do they do have great charts that's for sure and really 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 pay attention to what the 10 year is doing oh also now that i've got you guys on here um oh and and yeah nick and the fed dr gammon you know what that reminds me i want to thank the guy who gave, i don't know if you guys have seen this shirt so someone made me a shirt to match my hat <laughs> so I thought that was really nice of them. So uh, thank you. I think this the gentleman was at uh, Kenny's Limitless event, but I, I wanted to wear that uh, to show you guys. Pretty cool. But anyway, uh, I also want to point out, guys, that it's not just the bond market, the 10-year, that's screaming recession. It's also the uh, commodities and gold gold and silver, which I'm super, super, super excited about because I cannot wait to buy it at a lower price, a very low price. Hopefully it gets cheap. And I noticed today that GD, the, the, the ETF for the junior miners, what is it? JDXJ or something like that. Uh, that is almost down to where it was during the Cerveza sickness. <laughs> that's for me. That's great news. That is fantastic. As someone who is bullish on gold and the gold miners long term, I, I've I said for the last few months, I think the gold miners uh, could be a great speculation. So let's go back over to the CNBC homepage here. Uh, let me do the screen share. There we go. And let's check out other commodity prices that are backing up pretty much what the 10 year is telling us. Other than oil, oil still up, but not up as much as it was, but it's come down significantly over the past couple of weeks. And that, look at gold. Oh, it's back up over 1800. Earlier this morning, it was trading in the 1700s and silver trading below 20. And then we go over to uh, Bitcoin trading under 20 again. You know, it was funny. I, I was watching a, or I was reading an article on CNBC and they were interviewing this crypto expert. And maybe I'll do a video on it later this afternoon. But the crypto expert said that one of the main reasons Bitcoin is down under 20,000 is because of high inflation. <laughs> whoa, whoa, time out here, time out. I, that's, I thought that's why we were supposed to buy Bitcoin. I thought it was a store of value and an inflation hedge. But... Uh, I don't want to beat up on the Bitcoin guys, but I just thought that was absolutely hilarious. So the point here, guys, 10-year treasury yield collapsing. This is really just, again, screaming recession. And this is being backed up by the gold market. Oh, and also Dr. Copper. I tweeted about that the other uh, just this morning. And if we look at a chart of copper, this is absolutely falling out of bed. This is a one-year chart where it got up to over $4.75. And now it's collapsed all the way down to 3.57.
as of today. And what's great about this, obviously, long term, I'm very, very, very bullish on copper. But uh, what is fantastic is you'll notice during the Cerveza sickness, it got down to 2.228. So I'd need to do a chart based on uh, that was inflation adjusted going back a lot farther. But my guess is once it gets below about 2.5, uh, it starts to get what I would consider cheap by my definition. And so hopefully, hopefully, hopefully throughout the next six months or so, copper gets below 2.5. Uh, so I can just back up the Brinks to uh, uh, $2.50. So I can just completely back up the Brinks truck there. And again, this is why I've got uh, a very large cash position in my portfolio right now. All right, guys, enjoy the rest of your afternoon. As always, make sure that you're standing up for freedom, liberty, free market capitalism. We'll see you in the next video.